I get questions year round about Harry Potter, whether it's appropriate, not only for children, but for adults, especially for professing Christians. Now I have a confession to make. I have never read a Harry Potter book. I watched the first movie. It was way too dark for me. I've always been very sensitive to this, but I have a lot of friends who are into it and a confession at my old seminars. We did a Harry Potter skit, which I repent for and apologize. I didn't know that I was dabbling in darkness all the way around. Our guest today has been on this program before. He has come out of darkness also. He is the senior pastor at Blessed Hope Chapel. He is the president of Good Fight Ministry. We've got the link to all of his information below. You'll definitely want to go to goodfight.org and also subscribe to his YouTube channel, which has got amazing videos about Things in the culture, movies, TV shows, books, um, even movie stars, and how a lot of a lot of them are being used by Satan to bring the dark magic and the satanic world into our living rooms. And we need to be so aware of this. And Pastor Joe Shamil is bringing awareness. He is the epitome of someone who is fighting the good fight and Ephesians 511, having no fellowship with darkness, but instead exposing it. Pastor Joe, thank you so much for being with us today to talk about Harry Potter. Uh, it's awesome to be on with you. It's a great opportunity to uh, help you reach people and warn them about the powers of darkness that many Christians who have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light, have jumped back into and immersed themselves in the very darkness that the Lord warns against. Amen. And you've got a documentary about Harry Potter that I have watched, and I highly recommend. The link is in the description below. You've also got some videos on your YouTube channel about this. This is something you've really studied, it looks like. Yeah, uh, enough to <laughs> enough to see how dark it is. And uh, to want to sound the alarm to my fellow brothers and sisters who are just unaware of, you know, that she's actually, you know, herself been influenced by demonic powers. And these powers, the Bible warns us to that the Holy Spirit speaks in the last days. It says, Paul says in First Timothy 4, that there'll be doctors of demons and seducing spirits. And there's not many things more seducing than Harry Potter, for instance, for young people. Uh, promising them power, pro promising them or giving the idea of wizardry and witchcraft is on the rise, as you know, and wizardry and all these different forms of the occult. And it's very, very seductive. And there was definitely a lot of doctrines of demons in her work. Oh, definitely. In fact, um, your documentary says that, and I've, there, I've seen that this was from an interview that J.K. Rowling gave, that she admits that there's real witches spells in her books. Absolutely, because she she states, she admits, she says, uh, she admitted before I even started writing my book, she says that there's quite a, she was into quite quite a lot of folklore and, and, and magic. She knew quite a lot about it, and she actually uh, Potter comes from you know a, a, a friend Vicky Potter, uh, who says when we were kids, you know, she would have us go gather things to, uh, you know, we, she dress, her favorite thing was to dress up like a witch, that is Rowling's. J.K. Rowling's, and that she would have them go get things together and to make potions and so forth. And and it's interesting because uh, uh, she says Joanne was, and I'll just quote her, was always reading to us and we'd make secret potions for her. And she would always send us off to get twigs for the potions. So it's interesting. She was kind of getting people into it. And then she had this, was enamored by magic and the occult and so forth. And now she wasn't just teaching her friends about getting excited about making spells and so forth, but she's immersed uh, hundreds of millions of minds of young people into uh, basically glorifying the occult, you know? It does. It glorifies sorcery, and the Bible condemns sorcery, not only in the Old Testament, but right up until Revelation, when it says that those who practice sorcery will be cast into the lake of fire, and they will not go into heaven. So this is a potentially salvific issue, isn't it? Yeah, and, and, and that's a that's a that's such a great scripture you referenced there. Uh, there's a number of times Revelation 18, 23 and, and uh, Revelation 21, 8, which you mentioned, they'll go to the lake of fire, those who practice sorcery. 22, 14 and 15 of Revelation, they're they're banished from the holy city, you know, in Revelation chapter 9, they won't repent of their sorcery. Uh, so it is a salvific issue because in Galatians 5, Paul mentions uh, sorcery, witchcraft, wizardry, however you want to translate that word pharmakeia there. Uh, that those who practice it, it's a list of the, the the list of the sins of the flesh, 
that they will not inherit the kingdom of God. And then he warns in the, the next chapter, you know, be not deceived. God is not mocked. He that sows the flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. It's on the list, the flesh list in verses 19 through 21 of, of chapter five. And he says, you know, he that sows the flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but for he that sows the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. If we continue, he goes on to say, so it's, it's just interesting that we have these categorical pronunciations against the occult mm -hmm. and that word uh as you probably know uh doreen as well is that word that's often used is pharmakeia you know it's where we get pharmaceuticals pharmacy from and they don't know how to translate that sometimes some translators i've seen some translations as interesting as dopings druggings others witchcraft magical arts uh sorcery because it has to do with sorcery uh and using drugs to open you up to the spirit world and what's really interesting in Harry Potter's, uh, you know, Snape's, Professor Snape's talks about these bewitching elixirs that they mix together that that bedazzle the mind, you know, bewitch the mind and, and with these potions. And it's interesting that the word in the Old Testament for witchcraft and witches is a Hebrew word that uh, uh, scholars were trying to understand the meaning of it because it means to cut up. And probably the best understanding is to cut up drug, cut up drugs because the Septuagint, which is a Greek translation of the Old Testament that was actually used in Jesus' day, Jesus quotes from it, that translation, it actually transfers the word in, from the Greek pharmakeia into the word witchcraft or witch in the Old Testament, which is a cognate, of course, of, of that family, pharmakeia, pharmacus, pharmakon. Not to get too technical, these words are a family of words that speak of opening someone else up, op opening someone up to the spirit world. They were also used, also, pharmacaea is also condemned by the early church fathers as drugs that were used uh, to abort children. But it's just interesting that uh, we have in Harry Potter, I mean, there's times where he has to take all these different potions, you know, uh, in, in the correct order and so forth. And and with kids in the drug culture today and ayahuasca with leading celebrities talking about, you know, having their ayahuasca trips and opening themselves up to see dragons and, 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 and spirit guides and, and serpents. And, uh, uh, Megan Fox just talked about how she went and did ayahuasca with Machine Gun Kelly and how they had these incredible experiences where she was in hell being tormented for an eternity. You know, well, you think you want to turn to Jesus after that, but a lot of these books, Harry Potter books, they open people, they, they basically, uh, glorify occult activity that actually has a real world application. And I think it's important that we know, and I'll, I'll give this quote since you reference, reference Revelation. In the Old Testament, even we read in Deuteronomy chapter 18, 9 through 12, uh, it says, when thou art come to the land which the Lord thy God shall give thee, he says, you're not to learn to do the abomination of those nations. And it gives a whole list that there shouldn't be found among you anyone who, you know, what causes a son or daughter to pass through the fire. And he mentions divination, but he also mentions those who are contacting familiar spirits, uh, wizards. Harry Potter's a wizard and so forth. And the Lord says in verse 12, that's because of these abominations that he's driven the other people out of the land that they're coming into and that they're not to learn to practice those things or imitate the practices of the nations. And unfortunately, you have many professing Christians who've let their guard down and are, instead of shielding their children from these things, are allowing them to be allured into those th these things. And, 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 uh, Doreen, if there wasn't a connection, you know, somebody said, well, you know, how much is it really influencing them? I've seen the publishers page of inviting children from the publisher of the Harry Potter to to talk about their occult experiences and how these books have encouraged them in regard to, you know, and they talk about how they, you know, uh, they want to get involved, you know, in the occult. And they're, some of them are having these nocturnal poltergeist type experiences since reading the books type of thing. Uh, she herself talks about how, yeah, I mean, I'm talking about Rowling here. She says, yeah, it's amazing because she says the kids she says some of them are so caught up in Hogwarts School of you know witchcraft and wizardry that they think it's real. And I get letters where they want to come to it. So you can't say it's not influencing people. It's interesting. We've sounded the alarm and praise God, you're sounding the alarm as well, uh, that this is causing people to open themselves up to occult powers. And we'd been saying this for some time and I was amazed. Uh, that we had a, uh, and I'll read it, the quote from you so I get it right. MTV News, you know, which is no friend of conservative Christians, you know, uh, they talk about Wicca is one of the fastest growing religions in the United States. And then they state this, a surprising number of young witches MTV News spoke with also said that they became curious about their faith through misguided pop culture fare, like the cabinet, uh, you know, like the craft and the Harry Potter series. And then they stayed in parentheses, 
guess a few conservative Christian groups were right about that one. But they're saying, hey, guess what? Wicca, which, by, by the way, was started by Gerald Gardner, who was a Crowleyan occultist, follower of Satanist Alester Crowley, member of his OTO. He starts Wicca. It's on the rise and it's connected to Harry Potter. Yep. So anybody who yep. wants to say, oh, this is just fanaticism. No, this is what God's word says. And we want to just reach out and snatch the kids out of the fire and snatch the parents out of the fire. As you said, many parents, well, many of the parents now were kids when they read those books and they're raising kids to know Harry Potter. But I, you know what? I tell you what, when you teach your kid and you get them immersed in Harry Potter and they hear a little bit about Jesus on Sunday, maybe at Sunday school, uh, they're a lot, a lot of times going to be more attracted to the sorcerer who who offers immediate gratification. Yeah, that's what it is, isn't it? I mean, Harry Potter is such a sympathetic character. I mean, everyone can relate to him being uh, abandoned, an orphan, and misunderstood. Everyone can relate to that feeling of it's kind of an existential issue. And then he's he's painted to be the hero that you fall in love with. A lot of these kids that you have interviewed with in your documentary, they idolize Harry. And then it's it seems to be a story of good versus evil, but it's upside down because the good guy, Harry, is using evil to combat evil. And so that brings up the question. A lot of people are saying, well, it's white magic. And God knows my intentions. So I wondered if you could speak to that, Pastor. No, that's a great question. In fact, it's funny you bring that up because I was just thinking <laughs> before I interview uh, about Albus Dumbledore. And he's like the head magician, you know, he's the top guy, you know, that they all look to. And Albus is a word that actually means light or white, you know, or light. Uh, and it speaks. So he's 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 a magician, but he's a, a magician of white magic, you know. And it's interesting that, that she and she admits that she picks her words carefully uh, when she's not channeling them, I should say, because let's just say this from the get go. We're talking about doctrine of demons here. She talked about how I mean, she was just divorced. She was on a train between Manchester and London on, on, a, on a, a train, and she wasn't even trying to write a children's book, you know, and, you know, she was writing for adults. And she says that characters like Harry Potter, the whole Harry Potter, that story just strolled into her consciousness, you know, and I remember when I wrote one of my, when I wrote my occult songs, but when specifically, I'm just mowing my lawn. I think I'm going to share that with you in my last our last interview. Tiki Tom, the Indian boy came into my consciousness and I just channeled it. And she says that when she, and that's before that's B.C., before Christ. And that's why, you know, you and I come out of that kind of background where now we're like, wow, we were just so wholly deceived. And now we want to warn others. A lot of parents don't have that background and they don't realize how subtle the powers of darkness are, how real they are and how they want their children. So I think it's important to understand that she also states that uh, she takes that dictation from that the words are audibly narr narrated to yeah. her. Yeah, and she's writing words that she's hearing. This is obviously coming from demonic spirits. I'm not saying she doesn't add her own thoughts in, but wow. And yeah. so do we really want to open up our, our children to these things? And the fact that Dumbledore, Albus, you know, a white or light, you know, he's a magician of light, you know, uh, the Bible says that Satan comes as an angel of light. And when we're talking about witchcraft and sorcery, which is what these books are all about, the Bible categorically forbids occult activity. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul says, I fear lest by any means as the serpent de deceived Eve through his subtlety that your minds would be deceived from your, your simple devotion to Christ, that you believe a different gospel, a different Jesus, that you receive a different spirit. And he says that Satan's ministers transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. He says, it's no wonder for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. And Satanist Anton LaVey, the author of the Satanic Bible, the one who began the church of, who started the church of Satan, uh, he stated, he stated there's no, he thought it was a joke when there's white magicians, you know, white magic, you know. He says, he admits there's no distinction between black magic and white magic. It's all coming from the same source. Of course, he tried to uh, claim that, well, we don't really worship Satan, but I've interviewed Susan Atkins uh, a number of times, who was the main killer for Charles Manson in prison uh, with my wife. We weren't in prison. We were visiting, of course. And she she said, yeah, we were, of course, Anton LaVey was a full-blown Satanist. He just said it was not really Satan because he wanted more recruits, you know, mm -hmm. and we found that out from a lot of other Satanists that admitted as much. So Satanism comes in many forms and its most subtle form. I mean, Satan is not going to come as the church father Irenaeus said in the second century and all his naked deformity, you know, mm -hmm. who would want to follow him. But he comes as an angel of light and offers power, offers powers of godhood, which is what this is about and, and so forth. Yeah, it's just so interesting. You and I both had that experience of automatic writing 
before we yeah. were saved. Praise the Lord for saving us. But we Amen. are sounding, as you said, we're sounding the alarm because we've been there, done that. Uh, yeah. Just just like J.K. Rowling, I was broke when I got the, what I called at that time, divine downloads. They were satanic downloads of right. information. Wow. I ended up writing 70, I think there were 70 books, sometimes five or six books a year that I, I said I was, yeah, I said I was taking dictation from God, but it was, it was from the lowercase God, you know, the God d- devil. The God's uh, world. Yeah, exactly. And so JK Rowling, just, she reminds me of you with your, your uh, Tiki Tom songs that were coming through. Uh, you had talked about in the, uh, in the documentary about Led Zeppelin, getting the mm-hmm. messages just kind of coming through. And then um, JK Rowling and myself, just getting these information. And then that rags to riches story that always happens when the devil, yeah, you became like the top new age writer in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it was just like overnight and it, and I it was scratching my head the whole time going, why am I now successful? Cause I'd written books before on psychology because that's my background. And, and they never did very well at all, but all of a sudden, you know, I'm channeling and the books are just being sold like hotcakes and same with J.K. Rowling, the devil's a sugar daddy. You know? Yeah, and- she was on welfare at the time. She was unemployed and rags to riches and in the midst of it. I mean, I, 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 my heart, I pray that she repents. And, uh, yeah. Because the scripture, Jesus warned that if you cause just one of the little ones, the children to stumble, it's mm-hmm. better that a large millstone be hung around your neck. You'd be thrown in the depths of the sea. You know, Jesus said of the children such of such are the kingdom of God. Let them come to me. But she's drawn them toward Harry and sorcery. And the Absolutely. Occult. Yeah. I mean, everyone wants to have that sense of control. And these days with things going on in the world, that just, it makes you feel out of control. So it's this temptation of the flesh, isn't it? From Harry Potter to try to take matters into your own hands. And, you know, absolutely. One of the things I've heard over the years, and this is before I was saved in sense is people saying that God doesn't answer my prayers. So I'm going to take it into my own hands. And I want to just see if you could address that. Why does God not seem to answer some prayers and people are tempted to do Wicca or new age? Yeah. uh, I believe that we're all being tested here, that we've been given libertarian free will, free moral agency. And uh, you know, we want instant gratification today. And the Lord tells us to wait upon him. Uh, He always answers prayer. The question is, is it, is it yes, no, or wait, you know, as we say, and while that's cliche-ish, it's very biblical, you know, uh, he says, yes, no, or wait. And the good thing as Christians, we can know, first of all, we have to make sure that we're not walking in rebellion to God. There's a lot of people that are rebellion to God and they're getting drunk, you know, and they're, they're doing drugs and they're, they're mean spirited to their wives or their husbands or their kids. They're living for the flesh. And then they want God to answer their prayers. And why isn't he answering my prayers? And they pray when they get in trouble to get out of trouble. Uh, but sometimes God allows us to chasten us to stay in trouble until we wake up and actually repent and seek his face. That's that's one reason. And uh, there's a lot of reasons. The Bible says if we ask anything in accordance with his will, you know, uh, he hears us. So but the Bible says in James, that's in uh, first John. But in James chapter four, it says it warns about asking according to your lust. And he warns that those, you know, who are double minded won't receive anything from the Lord in James one. So there's a lot of scriptures where he talks about our motives, where we're at. Uh, sometimes we're praying for something that's not part of his plan. It's not good for us. You know, Paul prayed three times that a thorn in the flesh would leave him. Right. And it's like, man, that's got to be a, a prayer that God will answer you think. But Lord did, said no, you know. And then finally, you know, Paul, after the third time, the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul. And Paul said he learned that. Because of all the visions he had, he wrote like half the New Testament, he could be lifted up in pride. Pride goes before fall and that goes before destruction. And God gave him, a, a, was not to be buffeted through the storm in the flesh to keep him humble. So he'd recognize that his power, God's power was perfected in Paul's weakness. So ultimately it comes down to, hey, are we going to trust the Lord and trust his will for our lives? So it's important. And there's a lot of different ways we can answer that question. I know you probably don't want to take too long because we're talking about Harry Potter, but I think it's a very relevant question because people are seeking power in the wrong places so sometimes some people and you and i both know there is a cult power and experience in in witchcraft in the new age movement and that and when people start experiencing that they oh it's real well yeah it's very real 
but it happens to be evil. It happens to be demonic, where they don't always maybe experience in some exhilarating, you know, you might be worshiping the Lord and it's, you just get that, that just beautiful feeling of that's supernatural at times when you're worshiping the spirit and truth. But we can't, uh, you know, and I'm sure, you know, a lot of us have had experiences where we sense the Holy Spirit in our lives, but we don't base, we walk by faith, not by sight. We don't base our faith on uh, uh, solely on experience. That becomes a, a, a blessing. But we, we we base it on being faithful to God and who he is and how he's revealed himself. And and sometimes God is silent for a while. He says sometimes he'll forsake a person to see what's in their heart. Look what happened to Job. Now, he didn't ultimately forsake him. He was there, but he wanted to see what was in his heart. So we're being tested. And Job's prayers weren't being answered right away. But we learn from James that Job's an example for us New Testament believers. And he says to consider the perseverance of Job and how he's blessed twice as much in the end. So if we persevere and thank God for the prayers that we do see answered and thank him for the prayers that he doesn't answer and realize that Father knows best in the long run will be ultimately ultimately blessed. That is that is just such a great reminder to not try to take things in our own hand. Don't lean on our own understanding. In other words, to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Not an easy yeah. thing to do. You can pray to trust him more. And, yeah, amen. And he'll help you. Yeah. So. yeah and I think to just maybe piggyback on that and segue back to the whole Harry Potter, Potter phenomena is this whole idea about becoming a God. That's one of Satan's lies, you know, and Satan's original lies were, you know, to initiate yourself into occult knowledge through the tree of Gnosis, tree of knowledge of good and evil, uh, which is what the occult is all about. And that you shall be as God, he told Eve. And Harry Potter is all about becoming a wizard, a witch, and having all this power, you know, and that you shall not surely die. Satan's lie that you won't die at the end of the, her first book. You know, I think it's Dumbledore says, you know, death is really a great adventure into the next adventure or whatever. And the Bible says the enemy, death is our enemy, you know, and Jesus will ultimately destroy the last enemy, death. And he already has victory over it through his death on the cross and pain for our sins. Death is a penalty because of our rebellion and God's righteous wrath against those who wanted to be God instead of him, wanted to be like Satan was the most high. Satan said he wanted to be like the most high God and God brings judgment. So Harry Potter teaches, you know, basically you can become like a God. There's death is actually really good. And you just get into cult knowledge and so forth. And that and that's all out of Genesis chapter three. And that's why in the New Testament, Paul says, I'm concerned as a serpent deceived Eve. And by the way, uh, Doreen, you're familiar with Helena uh, uh, Blavatsky, yes. which by the way, it's kind of interesting. Her initials were HP, right? Mm. Uh, Harry Potter's initials, you know, and it's like, well, that could be a coincidence. Yeah, that very likely probably could be, probably is a coincidence, but guess what? She has a, a book that has to be read about, you know, witchcraft by, uh, that's highlighted in one of her books by, uh, it's, it's basically a meta, meta thesis, you know, an amalgamation of the same letters from Blavatsky. Madame mm -hmm. Blavatsky, Helena mm -hmm. Petrova Blavatsky, mm -hmm. who basically said Satan is our redeemer. He's the one who bid us to become gods and so forth. And she had Lucifer publishing, you know, came out of her works, the Theosophical Society. Uh, uh, the, ju ju the journal Lucifer was hers. They la later changed Lucifer publishing to Lucis because it was just too obvious. Mm -hmm. But she, Satan becomes a hero in her books. And and uh, Harry Potter, it's, it's, it's Vablatsky. V.A. Blatsky. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's, but Love Asky just turned around and it's Cassandra but instead of Helena. Uh, Blasky, that's a tongue twister. But she's basically uh, honoring a, a, an occultist who was very anti Christ, anti Christ, very anti. She hated the idea of a personal God. She's more pantheistic, pushed Buddhism and so forth. And channeling, she channeled like the, the, the Isis Unveiled, just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages long. But What's happening is through Harry Potter, uh, she's bringing occultists to the forefront, you know, and uh, she's even in, in, in interviews, she's talked about how she believes that we all have magic within us, you know, and uh, that she says we basically all these, she goes in the Harry Potter books, you know, some people don't have it, They're like the muggles, for instance, they may or may not. Muggles, by the way, this is, it's very, as a stroke of demonic genius from Satan, because the muggles are the, the parents that disapprove of magic. And they're portrayed as ignorant, dumb, evil. And basically a kid reading the books, if you don't believe in magic, guess what? They've already preconditioned you through the books to look at those who disagree with, with practicing this as basically just idiots that are just blind and, 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 and you know, and so forth. So it, it, it's a lot of very demonic subterfuge. Mm -hmm. We're called not to be ignorant of Satan's devices and we need to be aware of what he's doing. And 
my heart breaks for the parents that are contending with this in their homes and so forth, but they need to stand up and, 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 and set an example, you know? Yeah. Uh, it, it's very heartbreaking. It is. And so let's brace ourselves for even more pushback with this next question, Pastor, is that a lot of people justify Harry Potter because of Tolkien and, and even C.S. Lewis of Narnia. And they say, well, T- Tolkien was a Christian, Lewis was a Christian, and they had fantasy in their books. And I wonder if you could speak to that. Yeah, you know, I, I probably take a stronger position than most on this issue. This is my personal conviction. You know, mm-hmm. believers have different convictions, but I'm not a huge fan. When I was a new Christian, new Christian, I read Mere Christianity, and I liked, you know, uh, in Lewis's appeal to how everybody appeals to higher morality, his evidence of God. There were some really good things in there. But one of the things in that book is he says that we're all gods by nature. And I thought that just, you know, later, you know, kind of stuck in my craw. Like, what's he talking about that? And then he so often would use, you know, you know, witchcraft as a positive thing, you know, and Tolkien, you know, Roman Catholic, you know, uh, similar. And they were friends. And I don't want to judge his eternal soul. I don't know where he was in the end. I know he reverted to Catholicism in the end, had, a, I think, he, the last rites were read to him. But he he denied that Jesus Christ died for our sins as a substitutionary atonement. That Jesus actually paid Lewis is is that is that he died to pay for our sins and and taking our punishment on on our behalf and to me that's a denial of the gospel. So even when I look at C.S. Lewis, while he's written some r- r- things that are, a lot of people have been really blessed by, there's a mixture of darkness in there that I personally can't countenance as and feel accepted. So in my messages through the years, even though I'm a pastor, everybody loves to quote C.S. Lewis. I've and there's some great quotes, you know, that are actually a lot of truth quotes. There's a mixture of darkness there, and it's almost as though his books, along with Tolkien's books, have paved the way for Christians to accept say, a lot of Satanism, a lot of occultism as being acceptable as well. This has become an excuse. In his in his screw tape letters, he talks about Satan's, uh, you know, it's all about how, you know, Wormwood and, and, and screw tape, uh, you know, uh, deceive the patient. And he talks about in the introduction how you know, he worries about his He's concerned that his words will be used by people to uh, promote, uh, to actually do satanic things. I just think it's interesting. Bono, who loves C.S. Lewis, we have a whole thing on Bono and you too and C.S. Lewis. One of our videos uh, is was, was part, part two of the Submerging Church video. And we kind of separated. It was all one at one time uh, where Bono used C.S. Lewis's tactics that he sees. And I'm not saying C.S. Lewis's motive was this. I don't I don't know what is, you know, you want to, you know, I want to believe he had good motives and was just led astray in areas. but. Bono, you know, uses and you two use a lot of the tactics that you see with Wormwood and, and, and screw tape when and they became the biggest band of the world. And we we just basically go through that. And it's quite crazy, and quite interesting. But I'm just saying that I that doesn't work with me when somebody says that, because I already have a hard time with a lot of uh, Lewis. I don't you know, I mean, think about this Gandalf, right? The, the, the good wizard you have there at Bethel, you know, where the supposedly the biggest revival is taking place in the nation. You have, you know, Bill Johnson, who's leading this supposed revival. And we look and I believe in the power of God. I believe in the gifts of spirit. When you come out of darkness, you realize that God's got more power than Satan, especially when you're delivered from the powers of darkness. But I watch out for charismania, you know, and and uh, what's going on there is you have. And this was during, you know, the whole, you know, Black Lives Matter thing. And they get up on stage, Bill Johnson and other popular leaders, and they take get what a replica of Gandalf's wizard staff. And they hit it on the ground to banish racism. And, and, they, and, they, and they do it three times. In fact, one time they're like, we got to do it one more time like they like Gandalf did. And I'm like, wait a minute. You guys claim to be relying on the power of the Holy Spirit, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But you're, you're actually relying on this, this kind of spell through Gandalf's. So it's interesting to see that even some of these writings have influenced even professing Christian leaders into thinking they can use some sort of, you know, aspect of of magic but it's good because guess what tolkien wrote about it so we got to be very very careful i think with all these things i absolutely agree with you pastor i'm so refreshed to and encouraged to hear you say that about c.s lewis i exactly agree with you and and especially tolkien they are glorifying witchcraft and sorcery and like you said they're desensitizing people to those topics and that leads them right into something like harry potter well praise the lord i didn't know where you stood on c.s lewis mm-hmm. because our our view now is is a quite a bit. Uh, I, it's mm-hmm. it, it might be more rejected, but 
because no. people don't want to think anything negative about C.S. Lewis. But it's like when you're denying that Jesus actually paid for your sins yeah. on the cross and didn't take the wrath of God in your place. To me, that's denying the heart of the gospel. Yeah, well, I never quote him either. I'm just like you, even though he has some good quotes. When I read screw type letters, I thought he knows demons a little too well. And mm. I had a big, big check in my spirits. It's a good point. Uh, yeah, I was newly saved reading um, uh, screw tape letters. And I thought, this is too much like the dark side that I just came out of. Yeah. And Amen. and then and it, and it led me into the false conclusion that the devil can read our mind too, like that book. So it was not biblical at all. Yeah, it's it's interesting too that with regard to because this is something we hear all the time. You know, we did an expose. Uh, as you know, you've highlighted some of those uh, last the interview we did together on on Marvel in DC, mm -hmm. and there's a, a leading apologist. You know, same field that I'm in, and he's like wrote a book praising praising uh, uh, the, the superhero movies and so forth. And I thought, well, this guy just must be really really unaware of all the occult channeling that these writers are about, you know, but it's interesting. He used, uh, it's interesting. He used, you know, C.S. Lewis and Tolkien mm -hmm. as examples that to, to, you know, cause so they're trying to create a, an apologetic to salvage. And by the way, he said, you know who the best superhero that, that looks like Jesus is that he loves the most as a picture of Jesus. Okay. He says, Harry Potter. What? <laughs> no kidding sister. And I was like, you know what? This is crazy. I mean, well, there's pictures. I mean, he's sacrificial. He's, you know, it's like taking Hugh Hefner and saying, because let's say he lays his life down for somebody. Well, he's such a picture of Jesus. He's such a hero, you know, mm -hmm. or take, you know, Friday the 13th, right? Take Kruger, the main character. He sacrificed himself. He's against immorality among the young people. Mm -hmm. He has scars from the, 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 the trauma he's gone through. Oh, what a wonderful picture of Jesus. Everybody say, that's horrible. Why would you do that? Well, I won't do that. But you can't do that with Harry Potter either, because I think this is something we point out in our video expose is on the same list where you have, uh, you know, sexual perversion condemned. Uh, you also have sorcery condemned. So would we make it? Well, Harry Potter, it's it's, it's basically mythical. It's, you know, it's a, like a big fairy tale. So forth. Well, wait a minute. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft in wizardry in sorcery. Uh, you know what? Uh, what if we wrote a book? I'll use an, I use analogy. What if somebody wrote a book that was about Hogwarts School of sexual perversion and pedophilia, homosexuality, and it was just fantasy? Would you give that to your kids? You'd say, of course not. That's wicked. Well, it's just fantasy. Yeah, but it's it's fantasizing about wicked things. Well, guess what? Harry Potter is fantasizing about that which the Lord calls an abomination. Mm -hmm. Same thing, one's physical, one's spiritual. It's interesting that the word harlotry and you know spiritual adultery and so forth that are used in scripture uh, against are, are used spiritually against you know those who get involved in divination because physical adultery is betrayal to one's spouse. Spiritual adultery is betrayal against God, and that's when we get into trafficking in the powers of darkness and illicit things that the Lord condemns. It's so true. This this whole Harry Potter phenomenon, it's it seems like a cult to me. And I know for a while there was people calling it to be a religion and to be studied at different yeah. universities. And uh, Pastor, in your documentary, which I highly recommend, the link is in the description below on Harry Potter. You talked about the symbology of the serpent, the snake, all throughout Harry Potter. And there's also the owl, which I think is kind of like his yeah. daemon or his spirit guide. I wondered if you could talk about the use of the snake and maybe the owls in Harry Potter. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, those are favorite symbols, as you know, uh, among occultists and uh, especially the serpent, you know, and, and so forth. And and both Crowley and Blavatsky, were basically, if, if there were two cornerstones to the modern New Age movement, we'd say it's Crowley and uh, and Blavatsky. Both of them, you know, they emphasize the serpent, you know. And it's interesting, Crowley, you know, said that you know satan is the one that you know uh the serpent is the one who bid us to do his bidding and that and and and, and let it bestowed upon us godhood same blavatsky said it's basically the same thing and you see the same thing with eliphaz levi and these other ancient occultists in their use of the serpent and so forth uh, uh now it's interesting because with regard to uh crowley and the serpent he one of his sayings is you know i'm and he's channeling in the book of the law 
which he claimed came from a spirit named Iwas, who identifies later in a footnote of his book Magic as Satan. And through this, uh, this, this satanic spirit, at least a satanic spirit, if not Satan himself, says, I'm the serpent who gives delight, you know, to worship me, you know, drink alcohol and take strange drugs, you know. And that's the whole phenomena of back to the cauldron and, 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 and so forth. But I think it's very, very interesting that J.K. Rowling has this infatuation with serpents, snakes. Snape is Snape, by the way, is the one who makes the potions to contact the snake or the serpent, right? Is that she has this incredible fascination. But it's interesting that those who are doing DMT, LSD, ayahuasca, uh, are constantly seeing serpents. They're constantly seeing dragons. And they talk about this, the, the, the serpent had, did you communicate with the serpent? Well, this, you can't make this stuff up, you know? So there's a satanic spirit that, that, that permeates this. Before I was a Christian, one of the first times I had taken LSD, uh, I remember I'm being on my friend's front lawn. I was looking just, you know, tripping and all the clouds were becoming dragons. Now I didn't understand anything about the occult then. I'm like, why? And it kind of was scary, but I was like, try to shake my head that I just, they kept becoming dragons. I thought, well, then it was interesting after I started studying the occult, realizing the connections to the demonic world, because Satan, the Bible says, be sober, be, be uh, vigilant for your adversary. The devil walks about as a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. God wants to be sober. Satan wants us to be under mind altering drugs. Even alcohol can do that. Marijuana can do that. Uh, so it's interesting that uh, I was seeing that. And then now having researched it for years, having almost written an entire book on it, I've got a lot of books I never finished. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's interesting that all the phenomena that you see were with there's DMT or ayahuasca, all this contact with serpents and dragons. It's like becomes a main symbol in their experiences. And I thought, wow, way back, because that always stuck in my mind. Why am I seeing all these dragons? And then we became a Christian. And I started reading the Bible, Revelation 12, 9, you know, some like to disassociate. Oh, well, the serpent isn't really associated with Satan. No, Revelation 12, 9, it says that Satan deceives the whole world. And it says four of his different epitaphs or names. He's called Satan, you know, Satanas. He's called Diabolos, the, 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 the devil is a translation. He's also called in that those passages, that verse, uh, the serpent of old, <laughs> right? And the, the great red dragon. So these are all symbols of Satan and just all in one verse in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. And there's definitely a radical connection to the spirit world. And he loves using that symbology of himself. It comes out in the Harry Potter stuff. Well, we really appreciate you pointing that out. So the Harry Potter books and movies contain real instruction for real occult practices, divination, scrying, mediumship, uh, alchemy, et cetera. There's just so much in there. Yeah. Are the Harry Potter books a how-to occult set of books? I mean, are they something that is just designed with this fantasy story as a cover? Are they how-to books of instruction? Well, some have pointed out uh, through the years, you know, various uh, spells that are used in the books. She talks about how she likes to go back and find out who these specific spirits were or ghosts and, and certain words that show research that have come to her and so forth or that she's working with, I should say. Uh, she talks about it like a third of the stuff comes from, you know, real stuff that she's researched. But it's interesting. Nobody can deny when you see Love Lasky instead of Love Asky that mm -hmm. she knows her stuff. In fact, it's really interesting. Uh, Crowley, who talked, who, who said the best sacrifice is an intelligent male child for blood sacrifice, you know, and talked about sacrificing, uh, how to sacrifice children, you know, and so forth, uh, with, you know, full-blown Satan is called the wickedest man in the world, as you know. It's interesting that you don't just have Blavatsky turn into Helena Blavatsky turn into Cassandra Blavatsky. You have some very interesting parallels. And I'm not going to say that she consciously did this because it seems like she's admitting to doing some kind of channeling, uh, hearing a voice dictate to her narration. But the parallels between Aleister Crowley and Harry Potter are stunning. Uh, they're both, you know, uh, they both hate, you know, have a really hard time with their parents. You know, Crowley's mom called him the beast. Uh, Crowley uh, gets initiated into the occult uh, in, when he's 11 years old. He said, before I touched my teens, actually, he said that he's aware that he was the beast whose number is 666. And it's interesting, uh, when he's 11 years old, he has this kind of epiphany uh, where, you know, he create, you know, uh, he claimed that he sacrificed his first cat at the age of 11, you know. And it's interesting that Harry Potter, it's when he's 11 years old that he has this great epiphany, you know. Uh, and 11 is associated with him 
uh, not only his introduction to witchcraft, but he has a wand, but he wants to buy this wand because it's 11 inches long. 11 became the magic number, the Kabbalistic number for Lester Crowley, uh, where uh, in, even the letter, he, Crowley's way of spelling magic, M-A-G-I-C, with an added K, uh, is the 11th letter of the alphabet, K. And that's why he says he used K, because it had that Kabbalistic magic. That was his magic number. Uh, Crowley talks about how he knew from a young age he had occult or distinguished marks. that, And he said that he had hairs, I think it was said on his chest, four hairs that were in the shape of a, a swastika. And he mentions Hitler. He says, Hitler was, he said, but I am. So almost a play on he's the Messiah because he felt he wanted to be the beast. But he looked at himself as a Hitler and this ultimate Antichrist. But he had this distinguishing Nazi mark. Well, J.K. Rowling gave Harry Potter a distinguishing mark, which were also used by the Nazis, by the way, uh, the lightning bolt. And it's just, you know, an HP, you know, it's just Vablaski. You put all that, to, you look at those things. There's a lot of other, there's other parallels. But uh, I know you want to save some time, you know, uh, to address maybe encourage the parents or what have you. But uh, this is, like I said, you can't make this stuff up, you know. Yeah, it's just, um, it's crazy when people go into a bookstore these days that there's so much witchcraft that is available in these books. And it just seems so homogenized and safe to go to Harry yeah. Potter but you also talked about in your documentary that Disney was kind of the laid the groundwork for making sorcery seem normal and safe and entertaining. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in fact, a lot of people don't know, but, you know, Walt Disney was a member of the Rosicrucian Society. And if you look at the Rosicrucian, the AMORC, you know, a mystical order of the Rosie Cross, AMRC, and you'll see uh, who their famed members were. And one of them is listed, on, even on the Wikipedia page does that, you know, Walt Disney. And the purpose of the Rosicrucians, they exist to make the occult popular. Well, it's hard to find somebody who, maybe besides J.K. Rowling now, but who's made the occult more popular and acceptable among Christians than Uncle Walt, you know, so, oh, he's such a, a Walt Disney, but he was a member. He was a, uh, a member of the, what was a precursor to Masonry. Uh, some say he was a full blown 30, 30 degree Mason. I haven't found any evidence of that, but I found, Hey, he was a member of the Rosicrucians. That's, that's an, a, an overt occult organization, which by the way, they got their first charter here in the United States from a Lester Crowley. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Rosic the AMRC did. And they even used his insignia as his, you know, his, 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 what they call, you know, his lamin symbol, you know, with the, the dove and the, the book and the eye and the triangle. They used it early on. And he almost, uh, he was planning on suing them because he felt he should be in the, the head of that order. Well, Walt Disney belonged to that. And Walt Disney said, you know, Crowley taught to write backwards. But Walt Disney is known as the sorcerer uh, and the sorcerer's apprentice. He's, he's, they make him, the sorcerer, look like Walt Disney. And his name is Yensid, Y-E-N-S-I-D, which is Disney, spelled backwards. Uh, and Aleister Crowley said that his disciples were to learn to write backwards. And, of course, the sorcerer teaches Mickey sorcery, the symbol of Mickey that's used as a sorcerer's cap. It's the magic kingdom and so forth. And, it's by the way, speaking of backwards, uh, Harry Potter, you know, gets a lot of his learning from Arrested or Desired, the mirror that gives him insight. Uh, which is desired, spelled backwards, another Crowleyan technique, you know? I mean, just go on and on writing this forever and ever. It's just so, so dark. But Walt Disney, and now we know, you know, I mean, the Disney today, uh, look at what's going on, whether it's uh, one of the top animators for television, animation for Disney, says that she's putting queerness everywhere and nobody tried to stop her. And then you have Little Demon, a show that just came out a few months back, uh, where uh, the the main witch, you know, I should say the Antichrist is like a 13 year old girl and her mom has sex with Satan and births her. Her mom's a Wiccan, shows her sacrificing, going to sacrifice a goat. Uh, uh, Satan is played by a guy that used to play in Taxi, uh, the main guy, Levito. And it's interesting because then he talks about going and sacrificing children and he's meant to be a cool guy. And uh, she's a Wiccan witch, the mother of the Antichrist. And the Antichrist is a 13-year-old girl. She's an endearing character, kind of like Harry Potter, discovering her magic and 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 so forth. And it's just heartbreaking because I heard an interview with the cast, uh, and the cast was being interviewed. And the one that plays uh, the witch, you know, Aubrey, she plays the uh, the witch there. 
of the mother, she plays the mother. Uh, she's asked, isn't it a complicated role to play the mother of the Antichrist? You know, the, and Satan has been your lover. And she forgets the question. And she has to ask later, what was the question? Because she wants to say this. This is on her heart. She says, I'm just happy that we're promoting paganism to the public. Wow. So, and this is if facts and they're owned by Disney. So whether it's homosexuality mm-hmm. or the occult, these things are forbidden in scripture. But uh, parents ought to be aware. We ought to be modern. Our children, I don't, I personally, and I've raised three. Now I'm helping my, my children to raise some of their grandchildren as far as just, you know, not the dad, but just they, they do an awesome job. But you have to warn the grandchildren. But we got to be careful to monitor any, if you're allowing your kids on the internet, you got to be careful. You got to monitor that. Cell phones, who they hang out with, what's influencing them. I mean, I got influenced into the occult by some of my friends who were yeah. dabbling. Went to a cemetery together and stuff. We just thought it was cool as this young teenager. Before I knew it, I was opening myself up to demonic forces. So it's imperative that we guard our children's hearts, you know? Absolutely. And I hope that you know while watching this video that Pastor Joe and I are not judging anyone personally. We are not trying to ruin your fun. We know that this is kind of tempting in this world as crazy as it is right now. But it's really not the source of fun or peace or any kind of fulfillment that you're looking for. Only Jesus saves. Only Jesus can give us the true lasting peace. The rest of these fleshly desires that Harry Potter or Disney or Aleister Crowley seems to offer, they're fleeting. They're for the moment. And as someone who was... I didn't even know it. I was, I thought I was a worker of righteousness, like second Corinthians eleven fifteen 15 says, but I was mm. really a servant of the devil unknowingly. I had all the goodies of life and it didn't give me any peace at all. I was still seeking and I kept seeking until I read the Bible. And that's where I finally found all the answers I was looking for. And I found the peace through Christ as has pastor Joe and many of the people that he has taught over the years. So we pray that if this convicts your heart, instead of getting angry at us, that you go pray for God's wisdom Amen. and open the Bible, read the gospel of John, just get into the, the words of Jesus and, and pray for God to give you wisdom about Harry Potter. If there's a seeming addiction to this, Pray for God to come help Amen. you, for G- Jesus, to cast out those demons, to break that that stronghold and to deliver you from that darkness. Uh, God is everything. He's all the power, but he will give us over if we keep sinning and, and our consciences can become seared if we keep ignoring the Holy Spirit. That's so right. we just, we, we're making this video out of love. I hope that you can see that and feel that. Amen. Yeah, uh, such encouraging words, uh, Doreen, and we've been there, so we know how real it is. Yeah. And, you know, you weren't even seeking occult powers. I wasn't seeking occult powers, you know. I didn't even believe in Satan, you know. A neighbor of mine brought a big wizard four feet tall, and I put it, that she painted for me, you know, a ceramic, I guess it was made of, and and I put that at the bottom of my bed, and I visualized, because I was reading these New Agey type books, my success, and I want to be like that wizard. You know, and before I knew it, I opened myself up to all these occult demonic powers. Well, guess what? I wasn't reading Harry Potter. That would have really endeared me toward endeared me toward occult powers and wanted to be like Harry and so forth. And that was just having a statue there, you know, an idol. And I just visualized myself being like it and visualize, you know, music and so forth. That just all started coming to me. But then so the covers get pulled down, you turn sideways in your bed. All of a sudden they start to communicate to you. I realized. I'm in touch with something really, really, really evil and come to Christ. Then you start seeing this being embraced by and, and hear her even talking about being in touch with occult powers, you know, of some sort, you know, uh, mystical type powers and having a history of loving magic. Uh, it's just heartbreaking. I hope the parents that they would just really uh, see that, you know, uh, you know, we're doing this obviously because we love truth. We love Jesus. We want him to be glorified and exalted not not fake phony wizards jesus is real you know there's 80 and bc we're in, you know 2023 it's all based on the fact that he really did come he is the lord and savior he's coming back and parents need to realize that the lord says in ezekiel that the children the children belong to me they're his children first and we're going to give an account on judgment day as stewards as to what we've done with our children and whether we've trained them up in the way they should go or not and god tells us that you know the parents in First Corinthians seven fourteen they sanctify their children, and sanctify means to you know make holy or to set them apart. We're supposed to be setting them apart from evil 
and not immersing them in evil, but protecting them. And, and we're called in the scripture to teach them to discern the difference between good and evil, which is what this is, show is all about here and, and recognizing the difference. And that's how they grow from being babies in Hebrews chapter five, who cannot discern between good and evil. And, and they're, they're trained in the word and then their senses are spiritually trained and they can discern and having the love of God and the fear of God, which is the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Many parents, maybe many Christians don't even fear God anymore. And how can you be a Christian and reject the very foundation, which says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. We can't even come to Christ unless we realize that we're, we're deserving judgment from this holy God, thrice holy God, and repent and put our faith in what he's did and receive cleansing through the cross and what Jesus did on the cross for us and paying for our sins. So as parents, it's important that parents put on the whole armor of God and they help their children put on the armor of God. The children are very young often and they don't even understand they need the, the, the armor of God. But the interesting when Paul says put on the whole armor, it's from one Greek word, a panoplia. And that word is takes pan, pan, uh, the word pan, which means all and uh, uh, plea, which is deals with the armor. And he says, put on this whole armor that you might stand against the schemes of the devil. And that you would, and he goes on to say in verse 13, that's verse 11, that you could stand in the evil day. And we're supposed to put on this whole armor. And we wouldn't put our kids in a, uh, you know, if your kids play hockey, you wouldn't throw them into a game where the puck can go 100 mile, plus miles an hour without a helmet on or put them in a tackle football game and not send them out there without, you know, pads and a helmet. How much less should we send them into the world without helping them put the armor of God on and, and knowing the truth. And a lot of the armor is associated with God's truth, which is what we've been talking about, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, right? The belt of truth and so forth, the helmet of salvation and breastplate of righteousness, the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. All this is so important if we want our children to survive, but parents are doing the opposite. They're not sanctifying their children, not keeping them separate from evil. They're immersing them in some of the darkness that they've been immersed into because the Harry Potter movies go back 20 plus 30 years now. And a lot of parents want their kids to get into them and they're Christian parents, but they're making a, a, a horrible mistake. And I would encourage the parents that are doing that. I say this in love. We love you. The Lord loves you. I believe he's allowing you to watch this, this show with Doreen and myself for a reason, because he wants you to know he loves you so much. He's allowed you to see this, to give you a wake up call, to have, be convicted. That needs to start with you as an example to your kids that, hey, I am basically separating from myself all these things from all these things that glorify evil and i'm going to be immersed in jesus and his word and his spirit and then leading by example but also if there are kids in your home you should also be able to say hey i mean doreen you remember what happened in acts 19 19 right mm -hmm. yeah it says that the, the church at ephesus there they got all their harry potter books together i'm paraphrasing now right yes and all their you know all their books on the occult and so forth it says they got all their magic books together and they burned them and it's 50,000 pieces of silver. That's, well, you know how much I spent? They're worth 50,000 pieces of silver. And in, in, in our language, I guess the New Living Translation says it's worth millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And it was worth it because they were concerned about their own souls and the souls of their families. And they turned their back. That was their whole culture. And we need to turn our back and be radical for Jesus and serve him radically and lift up his name, not Harry's. Praise the Lord and amen with a capital A. Thank you so much for your emphatic boldness for the truth. And we just really right appreciate back at you, Doreen. it. Yeah. Praise I Lord mean, you. it's not easy to, to stand for biblical <laughs> truth these days, but we pray that God will continue to give you strength and boldness and courage appreciate and that. really appreciate you and your ministry and, and your wife and Chad and all you guys are doing to really, we really appreciate you as well. And yeah. we appreciate the prayer and uh, we need it. <laughs> Well, if you aren't yet subscribed to Good Fight YouTube channel, please look at the description below because there's a link to their YouTube. We'd love it if you would subscribe and then hit the bell to be notified because they put out a lot of really good and informative and sometimes super entertaining videos that really hit the nail on what's going on in this culture because it, it is a crazy world in there. And Good Fight Ministry is there to explain why it's crazy and how we can mark and avoid that craziness. Praise God. Thanks for having me, Doreen.